Hey, hey, what's happening? Good morning. Uh, Ward Wrestling Live. Happy Labor Day. I uh, hope everybody's enjoying their day off, their weekend off, and uh, having a good time. Uh, I actually have a amazing coach here in Florida, amazing wrestling mind, wrestled locally at Florida Palm Coast, uh, wrestled locally at UCF where uh, his team won national championships. And uh, he's actually in one of the greatest places to have a Labor Day in the Palm Coast, one of the uh, greatest beach areas in our state. And uh, he's the head coach at Montanzas High School. He's been the head coach for two years, uh, four years there prior as an assistant, uh, two-time NCAA All-American at UCF, Golden Knights, go Knights, 2010 NCWA National Champion team at the Knights with, with several local coaches. I've, I've looked at all the names and they're all kind of coaching now inside the state of Florida in our community. So uh, pretty cool how that works. Man, welcome aboard, Coach. Man, I'm, I'm so happy I got in touch with you, reached out to you, and uh, you said yes. So thanks for coming on. Yeah, no, I'm excited. This uh, show's become huge, so I'm happy to be a part of it. Oh, yeah. Well, I hope it's doing its job. You know, I, I uh, like I tell people, I just I really wanted to just give wrestling a voice that this was the only way I knew how because I wasn't a wrestler. So I wasn't I didn't know any other way. But it seems to uh, we've had some good voices on and uh, we've heard a lot of great stories and I've learned a lot. So I think it's been successful so far. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, man. So we were talking off the air. I know this COVID has really killed your summer, huh? Yeah. It's uh, like I said, it's the first time this will be my 10th year coaching in this County. And it's the first time that, I, I haven't had that, that interaction with the team in, in, in the 10 years, you know, I, I haven't seen most of the guys since March and, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of scary in, in a sense, because I mean, we have goals and, you know, things we want to accomplish and the summer is so important, but, you know, I, I understand. And right now it's about staying healthy and, and, you know, keeping those at high risk healthy. And I know there are a lot of teams that are in the same boat. So, Yeah, for sure. And, and, and I'm sure, uh, I mean, maybe you can invite all your friends to the beach and enjoy yourselves for a summer, uh, a summer outing. I mean, if beach wrestling happens to go on, yeah, it's just, uh, we're just out barbecuing and the kids happen to start wrestling. I don't know. I don't know what happened there. Uh, Palm coast. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I know it's tough and you got to walk on eggshells when you're hired by the public school district or a private school district or wh whoever is, uh, is leading the way. So, um, yeah, and I think talking to a lot of the coaches, I get the same sense as, you know, we miss wrestling, but we miss the kids. Like we really miss the camaraderie. We miss being around them. We miss whatever, helping them with their homework, helping them just with anything. Um, it's just nice to look over your shoulder when you're in your office and seeing them there. And then of course there's wrestling. So I'd imagine you feel the same way. It's kind of, uh, kind of lonely without them. I'm sure. Yeah, it, it is. You know, uh, we managed to keep in touch for the most part throughout the summer. I would text a workout here and there. Um, you know, it's kind of nice to start to see them again in the hallways. Um, unfortunately the school, you know, my hallways kind of, off of the main building. So I only get to see one or two of them. I don't get to see all of them, you know, but, uh, you know, I'm sure I'll start to see more of their faces soon. Yeah. I mean, and let's be real. I mean, I, I read a little bit about you. You've been in wrestling since like kindergarten. So this has got to be like the first summer of your entire existence that you can remember that you were stuck inside. Yeah, it, it's, it is, uh, it is strange. And, you know, uh, uh, I guess a lot, of, a lot of coaches will understand this, but I mean, we, we love wrestling and we love putting our shoes on too. And, you know, I, I love grabbing kids and, Hey, let's go drill a little bit, that kind of thing. So, you know, I'm, I'm itching to get back on the mat too. Yeah. And I, uh, you know, I mean, talk a little bit about that. You're from the Palm coast. So uh, coaching back at home has got to be um, especially cool for you. You've been back at home now 
God, what, four, five, six, seven, eight, you know, eight, nine years, you, you, you came back home first at your alma mater, right? And then um, transitioned to uh, an availability at Montanzas, and you've been there now six years. But uh, just being in your hometown, in your home city, uh, coming and bringing wrestling back there, seeing how much it's grown, I mean, uh, what has that meant to you? Uh, it, it's, it's something special. Um, you know, it's sometimes it can be hard to compete with those big metro areas where there's a lot of, um, resources, lots of clubs, you know, you talk about the Orlando area. I could think of, you know, you've got CFWA and then down the road, you have the, uh, USA wrestling and regional training center. Um, so there's a lot of places to go, a lot of places to train, a lot of good practice partners out in those metro areas. So, you know, coming back here, you know, there, there's a lot of tradition uh, of for wrestling in, in this county. And, you know, I, me personally, I, I look back and I tell people, I don't know where I would be without wrestling. You know, I, I mean, I probably be complete different career field you know, who knows, living where. And, you know, I just kind of wanted to bring it back to the county, to the community here. And I spent a lot of time giving back to Flagler Palm Coast. And I mean, even when I was in college, I spent a lot of the time in the summer in that wrestling room trying to help develop, you know, uh, share my stories. And, you know, there was an opportunity that opened up at, at Matanzas over here. And, you know, I, I, felt it, it, it was kind of what I wanted to do, you know, give back to the community and, you know, help grow wrestling somewhere else. And I mean, that, that's the cool thing about wrestling. You know, the longer you've been in it, you, you have a story for, you know, just about every possible scenario, you know, you lived every possible wrestling scenario imaginable. So, you know, if I, and you're in a great, um, a great town there, man. I, I love that town. We were talking off the air. My kids have been asking me all summer, has the pier reopened? Has the pier reopened? Has the pier reopened? I'm hearing that the pier reopened. Is that right? It, the pier has reopened. Um, I don't know if they're at full capacity yet. They, they might still have a limit and, you know, oh, well, that's cool. That makes it, uh, makes you feel a little comfortable. Cause I know with my wife, I'm like, hey, I'll take the kids up to the pier. And she's like, no way. You know how many people are on that pier all the time? And I'm, I'm sure they're making adjustments and keeping people. But yeah, I mean, that town reminds me, you know, I grew up uh, down in South Florida and I grew up on old Miami Beach, which reminds me a lot of what the Palm Coast is today. It was a cool coastal town. A lot of stuff was happening, but it wasn't what South Beach is today, obviously. It's insane, right? But um, so when, when I get to visit up there, or when I get to go down to like a town like South St. Pete, you, you kind of get that nostalgia feeling of that old Florida coast and a lot of good places to eat there and to have a fun. So uh, you're right, right in a great area. I mean, so you, you had the opportunity to wrestle under a Hall of Fame family and a Hall of Fame coach um, and, and Steve D'Agostino Sr. You, you wrestled with Junior and Michael or just Junior? So just, just with Steven, um... Michael, Michael was a lot after actually when I came back, um, coach Bossardette, my, my first year back in the County was, was the head coach at the time. Um, so I spent a year coaching with him and, and he started what we call the, the bad boy wrestling club. And I mean, we had a whole lot of kids, you know, training out of that club and, you know, Michael D'Agostino was a part of it. And, you know, uh, a couple kids who ended up moving on to Matanzas in the future ended up being a part of it. You know, it produced a lot of future state medal winners. So it was, it was pretty cool. And, you know, watching Michael grow up through that. Um, I left FPC after his freshman year. So, I mean, we were together for a year there. But I'm sure you keep a close eye on him. He's doing pretty good. And uh, I'm sure you're still close with the family. Uh, I, I actually was blessed. I don't know if you saw his sister did an interview on me. Yes. Uh, the other day on the news, it was really cool to have her reach out. Um, I believe you, Stephen Sr.'s brother 
I've had on the the uncle that went into the Hall of Fame with him. Um, so that was pretty cool. And yeah, I mean, just talk about growing up around that whole coaching staff and, and being under that kind of, uh, I mean, just some amazing coaches you were around. And, and then growing up on, on the Florida Palm Coast, don't tell us how many times you skip school to fish at the pier, just the wrestling part. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, <laughs> unfortunately, if I were to tell you my, my number of times I skipped school, it'd be kind of embarrassing because it was, it was zero. Because you know, I'm I was guessing school. that's the spot the kids go and they skip, right? <laughs> yeah, I was in school every day. So you know, maybe, maybe I wasn't the cool kid, I guess. Oh, well, um, since your dad runs the pier, it'd be hard not to get caught, right? Yeah, that too. That too. <laughs> Um, My dad was a cop on the beach, so if I got in trouble, I, everyone knew about it. Yeah. Uh, I, I can tell you this kind of funny story there. You know, Stephen and I, we, we grew up daycare elementary school together. And one year, and I, I it's, it's kind of a funny story. I, it's kind of embarrassing <laughs> when I tell people. But one, one year, he was like, hey, you need to come to wrestling practice with me because afterwards we go to Burger King and we get Pokemon toys. And oh, they're in. Yeah, at that point, you know, I, I was like, oh, yeah, Pokemon toys, Burger King, uh, you know, let's go. This is awesome. So I brought it up to my mom and my mom actually grew up in a wrestling family. My uncle coaches out in uh, Long Island, New York. He coached at uh, Center Merch's High School. He actually has the number one ranked uh, 126 pounder in the country right now. Oh, very so cool. My, let's get him on. Yeah, I'll I'll I'll. Uh, I'll reach out to him for you but uh my, my mom was all for it you know she grew up in a wrestling family so you know I I went out there and my first year I I broke my collarbone um <laughs> but you got but, Pokemon toys but I got them and you know I, I <laughs> at, at that point I I kind of fell in love with it because it's something for me you know I, I never really was the, the most athletic kid I wasn't the fastest wasn't the strongest but you know what it was something for me and I I enjoyed it and uh you know like you said having a, a hall of fame coach who you know brought three state titles to this county was awesome because he he taught us how to work hard you know that that was probably the biggest thing I took from him was you know this is how you're supposed to work and you're supposed to be here every day and you know I think that that is really what benefited me moving on was because I, I understood how to work. And, you know, I, that, that's something I really appreciate. It's funny how that works with the kids, right? Like I just had the, uh, the Auburndale coaches on and they're like, yeah, when we were younger, they told us if we do good, we're going to JB's pizza. So we all worked hard to go to JB's pizza. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's funny. I mean, I remember uh, traveling, playing basketball or whatever, because that was the sport that, that I did. And, uh, or tennis or whatever and you'd get five bucks to go to if you if you travel with the team you got five bucks to go to McDonald's afterwards you know and yeah I'm you know I'm 44 now so five bucks back then you could get you know a good amount of McDonald's right I sound like I sound like my parents now right I remember when I used to get two Big Macs and a large fry <laughs> for five bucks <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah man it's crazy how that works and yeah, it seems like FPC and, and, and Montanzas and that whole Palm Coast, um, I see there's some wrestling clubs now uh, that you guys are involved in. And, uh, man, that whole area is cool. I know, uh, man, you can't go wrong. You can surf, you can boogie board, you can fish, you can wrestle. Uh, it's a great little area there. Man, if people around the country are looking to move to a nice spot in Florida, uh, Palm Coast, man, comes highly recommended. I love it there. So, man, you know, you, you wrestled. Uh, you wrestled for a great program, a great coach. Uh, you probably could have went out of the state. Uh, but but you and your boy Steve, you guys decided to stay home at, at UCF and, and go to a college and wrestle club wrestling. Um, you know, what, what made you decide, hey, you know what, we, we want to go here. We want to do that instead of uh, kind of – see what the world had to offer outside of Florida? Well, you know, for me, I, I you know, I wasn't the, the best kid in, in our area. You know, I wasn't even close to being the best kid in our room. So I didn't have 
school sending me letters or, or calling me up. Um, the other thing was, you know, kind of a money factor, you know, bright future scholarships. Uh, most of my tuition was paid for. And at that point, you know, I could, I could go to school 80 miles down the road and go for cheap. And, you know, that, that was my plan. Originally, my plan was not to wrestle. And, you know, my, my last year in high school, just like I, I, you know, I think every kid in the state, except for the kids that win the state titles will say, you know, didn't go according to plan. Um, you know, my, my intention, like I said, wasn't to wrestle. Um, Stevens last year in high school didn't go according to the way he planned it to go. And I, I think for him, he was ready to, you know, maybe hang the shoes up. And his dad actually pulled me into his office one day and said, hey, look, you're, you're going to UCF. Um, yes, sir. <laughs> well, no, no, he wasn't. He knew that's where I was going. I had already. <laughs> turned in my, he was yeah. like, where you're going. No, he, uh, he knew I'd already turned in my paperwork and stuff. And he said, look, uh, they're having the wrestling banquet this weekend. You know, I, I, I want to take you guys down there and, and, and meet, meet the coach. Um, so he took us down there for the banquet and, you know, we, we got to, uh, spend some time with coach Johnny Rouse, which, you know, uh, you know, we could talk about him all day. Um, <laughs> met, met Jason Balma and uh paul rothenberg at the time and johnny rouse you know took us around took us around campus and you know the boys on the team were awesome uh, uh their awards banquet was awesome you, you just got to see like this is more than than a wrestling team you know this is a this is a family here and everybody was so welcoming and you know i remember uh, that night you know i got home and i showed my mom uh their uh banquet brochure um and you know it was at that point you know this is where i want to be i want to be with these guys you know so that and, and you got to wrestle um it's 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 amazing what i've learned right doing this show i didn't even know like college club wrestling existed i you know i had no idea what naia was you know all i knew growing up in sports was d1 d2 d3 right i didn't know what happened beyond that right um, so the things that I've kind of discovered and, you know, Juco wrestling and all that stuff has been amazing. But, um, with the clubs, there's some substantial clubs in the country and, and they're doing a lot of awesome wrestling, but you, you really get to travel the country and, and wrestle in these open tournaments. Uh, you get the opportunity, right. To wrestle against, uh, division series kids and NAIA kids and, um, other college kids that are, that are doing big things in the country. And didn't you guys have like a kid that was on the team that got scooped up and, and ended, yeah yeah and going to a, a big school after not a I mean UCF's the biggest school in the country but I mean as far as <laughs> as far as a wrestling program so after after I graduated um Santiago Martinez came in and you know wrestled with the program I want to say three years before you know getting scooped up by Lehigh which is awesome um, I mean, yeah, we had an opportunity to compete against the best. Um, you know, one year, 2000, I can't remember if it was 2009. I think it was 2009. We got to duel Purdue. Purdue came down. Oh, wow. um, they're in the Fort Myers area. And I, I mean, I could be wrong, but people were saying it was the first time a Big Ten wrestling team had, had uh, come down to Florida to wrestle. So, I mean, we wrestled Purdue in the middle of Fort Myers High School and that gym was packed and, and, you know, it was awesome. And I mean, we lost the duel. They were ranked 23rd in the country at that time. We lost the duel. I want to say it was 40 something to nine. Oh, pretty close. <laughs> well, I, I mean, <laughs> Hey, you guys got nine points. You guys were like, yo, we scored nine on Purdue, right? We scored nine. One, one was a forfeit, but the other was uh, a <laughs> CJ Hauser went out there and, and, knocked knocked out one of their kids in a match you know beat one of their their big shots five four so that was pretty awesome um you know there there are some some years the ncwa has been loaded 
Um, it's, I know you had coach Robbins on, uh, early in the summer and it, it's kind of become the, uh, the division for the schools that are transitioning. So you'll have schools transitioning from, uh, division one, uh, division two, division one. Well, they're on that probation period. So they, they would compete in the NCAA. So, you know, we had, we had schools like that one year, the top three NAIA schools were transitioning to division two, I believe. So, and this was the year after I graduated, you had McKendry, Lindenwood, Notre Dame college were all in the NCWA. Um, we had the prep schools, army, Navy, air force. Uh, they were in there all the time. So you see those kids competing or competing against them. And the next year they're wrestling at NCAAs. Um, as a matter of fact, Illinois Edwardsville, Southern, Southern Illinois Edwardsville, uh, they were in the NCWA for about three years as they were transitioning. And, you know, that, that's kind of my, my, uh, like my, my biggest moment was in, in 2010, I was in the blood round, the nationals, and I have to beat a division one college wrestler to place. And, you know, that's who was in front of me, a kid from Illinois Edwards, Edwardsville. So, I mean, that was a, that was a pretty awesome moment for me. Um, and I mean, there, there are just a lot of programs in there. Like you said, you did your research. There, there were your your consistent powerhouses. You know our, our rivals. You know Grand Valley State out in Michigan was a was a big rival school of ours. Uh, the Apprentice School out in Newport News, Virginia, was a big rival school of ours. Um, this program doesn't exist anymore, but Marion Military uh, Institute out in Alabama. Um, they were coached by the Hayeswinkle brothers. You know, two world team members. Uh, you know, they were big rivals of ours. And I mean, we, we saw these guys, we go everywhere together. We end up at the Citadel open, Pembroke open, Georgia open, you know, so you, you travel across the country and you're running into these same guys. And I mean, that's kind of what made us the, uh, the powerhouse teams, the NCWA is we, we wrestled that tough schedule and, you know, you hated those guys when you're on the mat with them, but then, you know, you saw them often and you kind of bump into them in the hotel and stuff. And, you know, you, you made some, some friends, you know, I guess frenemies, you, you, you off the mat, you liked them, you know, they lived the same lifestyle you lived. They had the same goals you had. And then on the mat, you know, that you wanted to beat the snot out of them and they wanted yeah, to do yeah. the same to you. You so. think, well, you think um, what are the chances that UCF can, can become, uh, you know, one of those first division one college wrestling programs in our state? I don't, I don't know. Um, there's been a lot of talk about that. I know there's, there's a lot of money involved. I know um, one of the things they look at is, is the area. I think the next closest division one school would be either Chattanooga or the Citadel, you know? Um, so I, I think that's kind of the, one of the concerns would be the travel. I mean, I, I would love to see it happen. Um, you know, they, they were a division two school not that long ago, back when it was, when it was a uh, Florida tech or FTU. Um, and actually coach Johnny Rouse was one of the guys on that team. And, and I mean, he's someone we could talk about cause he's, he's a great guy. Yeah. I mean, uh, it'd be cool. Yeah. I mean, I, I think I've, I've said learning what I've learned through this process is uh, if it was going to be a school, the first school is probably going to be Florida State up there in Tallahassee uh, or maybe maybe Florida and Jacksonville because they're kind of up there on the coast, easy travel into, into Georgia and the Carolinas. You can get up into Campbell and App State and Tennessee and <clears throat> those different schools, but uh, it'd be nice to see, see one of them do it. So um, anyway, over at Mantondas, man, you, your predecessor was very big in this, uh, the women's push. Uh, it's been sanctioned, I guess, uh, not this year, but the following year. Uh, we will have them at the state tournament, have the girls there. It'll be awesome. Um, but, uh, <clears throat> you know, talk about growing women's wrestling and, and, and what it means to Florida and to the country and, and, and where it's come, the growth of it since you've been involved. Um, yeah, no, I, it, it's, it's awesome. Uh, so John White was the, uh, the head boys coach here at, here at Matanzas 
since the school opened. And uh, he was actually one of my coaches. You know, he started as an assistant over at FPC and when Matanzas opened up 15 years ago now, going on 16, um, you know, he, he moved over and, and took over that program. Um, but he, he's really been pushing girls wrestling. And I mean, he, he's one of the guys he'll, he'll go to the meetings and, um, I mean, he, he, he's got, got the vision. He, he sees how big it, it, it could become here in, in Florida. I mean, it's already huge. It's the fastest growing, um, sport in college women's wrestling believe it or not is the fastest growing sport in, in, in college and uh you know uh, two years ago he got our school to add a, a girls team so what started as you know one or two girls practicing with with the with the program turned into you know he, he got the school to add a girls wrestling team and and I mean he knew he said, Hey, you know, th this is, this is legit. It's a, it's a big deal. And, you know, it's time to, to jump on board and, you know, we got a little bit of a head start and you know, that that's great. It's awesome. Yeah. Are you coaching both? Um, we'll kind of blend practices over the breaks. So we'll have, we'll have some girls and, and boys in the, in the room at the same time during the breaks, but it's, we just don't have, the space to run two different teams at the same time. So that the girls practice and as the girls are practicing, you know, I do different things with the boys. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll go out and run, you know, we'll, we'll do some weights. We'll watch film, study hall, that kind of stuff. And when, when the girls uh, practice ends, that's when I bring the boys in and, you know, we do what we need to do. Cool. Uh so um, taking over the program behind Coach White, obviously he's uh, legendary at your school, starting the program, building the program. And then in the wrestling community, I was reading, he's done obviously a ton. Um, uh, but you're in your second year of you taking the reins. What, uh, you know, what have you kind of dripped into the program that's, that's your personality and, and what are your goals for the program? Obviously, you want to win states, you want to win, 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 but, um, you know, are we close? Are you taking steps? What, what's the process going to look like? And, and how much of, of TJ Gillen now is, is actually into this program? Well, so, you know, that, that's a, a question a lot of people have asked me. Um, let me tell you, coach White is a great guy. A absolutely. The, the things he he's, he's done for me to help me develop as a coach. Um, I mean, I really appreciate it. People wouldn't believe. Um, he brought me on, and this would be going on six years ago. And I, I not a lot of head coaches would do the things that that he did. Um, when the girls' program started to come about, uh, he would take the girls one weekend somewhere, and I would take the boys. And I, I mean, you, you got the amount of trust a head coach has to let his assistants take his boys team to a tournament all by himself. Um, I, I mean, I, I have just a ton of respect for the guy for what he's done for me. Um, we just we mesh so well together that we kind of we, we put our style of wrestling into place. So when he stepped down and, and just took on the role of girls head coach, nothing changed. You know, uh, we had our system, the boys know the system. We, we have our goals and, you know, our, our goals are, we, we have our, our, you know, kind of what, what we expect. We, we expect to win the district, you know, that that's an expectation. Um, we expect. Oh, so, he's still, so he's still involved. Oh, so he's, he's still so he didn't retire. He transitioned to building the girls program and yes. allowed you to, to, to build the boys program, but he's still there for you to kind of lean on or, or get some mentorship from or some. So he's not, I, I, my, my apologies. I thought when I was reading it, it made it sound like he, he retired, you know? No, he, he took, he is the girls head coach. 
So oh, he, he's well, running, cool. he's running the girls program. But yeah, like I said, yeah, I, I, I mean, he's a dean at the school now, and I pop my head in his office every day. Um, if I have questions, you know, he'll help me answer it. He'll break down brackets for me and hey this is the returning points this is you know what we have coming back kind of deal but uh but he's been great and uh you know we we put a system into place a few years ago and we're, we're just going off of that system like I said you know we we expect to win our district uh we expect to win the region and you know those guys at Lincoln they do a great job and they've made it real tough on us the last few years and you know, we've fallen a little short to them, but you know, that that's still our goal. That's still our expectation. And, you know, we, we expect to bring home medals at the state tournament and, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to build into a powerhouse and, you know, we know the amount of work that that, that takes and it, it takes a village of people. And, you know, we're trying to get the right people in place. And, you know, once we, we can kind of, do all that yeah we're, we we like any other school you know we want to make a run do you um uh you know i know a buddy of yours zach sanford now took over your old program right um do you um being that you have history with that program is are you guys able to to do some duels together are you able to kind of wrestle together are you able to help each other get better which helps the county get better or is it a rivalry and that's where it ends? <laughs> no, it's, it's, well, I, I love to work with him. You know, I, I think he's a, he's a, he's a great guy and, and he's doing great things over there. Um, we just really haven't had that opportunity so much yet. You know, he, he just got into that program two years ago and, you know, I, I had a vision for the summer and, you know, this summer kind of went splat on us and, you know, that that's fine there but it's still it's still a rivalry you know there's only two two high schools in the county so I mean I mean it, it's it's every sport it's it's a huge deal you know football it's a huge deal basketball it's a huge deal softball baseball you go down the line you know it's it's when there's only two schools in the county and you know for for us we're, we're kind of in a lot of cases you know it's it's I, I feel like we're the villains when it comes to, when it comes to that rivalry and uh, you know, FPC has been around for years. Matanzas is only about 15 years old. So every, if you grew up in this County and you have kids in this County, you know, you went to FPC. So you want your kids to go to FPC and you want your kids to play football at FPC. You want your kids to wrestle at FPC and you know, in when Matanzas beats FPC in a sport, it's, it's like a, uh, you know, it's a, it's a huge deal because it's, we're the bad guys. <laughs> so uh, tell me a little bit about what, what that meant. What does Matanzas mean? What does it stand for? What's the, how did they come up with that? I mean, obviously well, I understand FPC it's in the Florida Palm coast, right? But yeah. Uh, but it's so, not like the Matanzas river, you have things around you that are. Yeah. So, the, the school is in, in, an, in an area, the, the county called Matanzas Woods. And if you go up just a few miles north of A1A, you hit Matanzas Inlet. And, you know, there's Fort Matanzas there. And, and that's kind of where the name comes from. Um, Matanzas is actually Spanish for slaughterers. So, uh -huh. you know, it, it's uh, back in, in early times, uh, Pedro Menendez had a, a Spanish fleet over in the St. Augustine area. And one day he was tipped off by a group of Native Americans that, hey, there's a bunch of uh, settlers coming through on this inlet here. So he basically, he took his ships just a few miles south to what's now Matanzas Inlet and slaughtered all these French uh, settlers and soldiers. And he let the women and children go, but um, that was nice of him. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, it was like 150 to 300, something like that. I have to fact check that, but slaughtered that many French people. So ever since they, they called that inlet, Matanzas Inlet, Matanzas meaning slaughterers. So. Yeah, so that's where they, 
That's where they got theirs, huh? <laughs> that's, that's where they got the name. And we were at the Disney Duels uh, two years ago, and we're at the ticket gate, and you know we're punching our tickets to get in. And one of the Disney workers was looking at some of the shirts. A lot of the kids were wearing the Mertensis wrestling shirts, and her jaw kind of dropped. And she said to me, she said, do you, do you guys know what that means? And I told her, I said, yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm aware of what it means. And I mean, she was kind of shocked. Um, last year, I was in a Chinese restaurant picking up dinner. And there was a woman in the Chinese restaurant. And I was wearing, you know, Matanzas gear. And she asked, is that, is that the name of a school? I told her it is. And she said, do you know what it means? And you know, we had a little conversation. She was from Cuba and said there's a town in Cuba called Matanzas. So it's. Uh, yeah. Well, last night I asked my wife, I said, hey, can you look up Matanzas High School? Because I was doing something to research you. And then I asked her, hey, can you look this up for me? And she's like, oh, God, that, you know, that means like killers, like slaughters or something. I'm like, OK, whatever. Can you just look it up for me? please? But yeah, I got. Uh, yeah, I got the same reaction from her. So uh, interesting. All right, yeah, man. It's, it's been awesome. Definitely name. <laughs> yeah, man. This has been awesome, man. I'm so happy you came on. You ready for the ten questions? Sure. All right. So, uh, Flagler Fish Company or Funky Pelican? You know, surprisingly, I haven't eaten at Flagler Fish Company yet, so I would say Funky Pelican. They got the best fish and chips. Uh the uh, the fishing pier or Silver Lake Park? uh the pier i like going on the pier uh waffle cone or the cone zone waffle cone sally's is pretty good too right it is um, washington oaks or junk is it jungle park no jungle, jungle Hut. Hut. yeah uh so washington oaks that's that's the uh that's the place i proposed to my my wife so so you better pick that. <laughs> I should get upset if I pick something different. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, A1A burritos or Senor tacos? A1A burritos. Uh, Flagler Beach or Beverly Beach? Uh, Flagler Beach. Usually we'll go, we'll go a little uh, north of Flagler Beach just because I don't like running into people a lot of the high school kids you know when i'm <laughs> trying to enjoy the beach it's not where i want to be at that time i like it uh turtle shack or oceanside beach bar oceanside oceanside's awesome uh varn park or mentanza's beach oh that was it varn park yeah that's where we hang out <laughs> uh terra nova's or rocky's pizza uh rocky's uh ham Ham, Hammock Beach, Hamrock Beach, or Old Salt Park? Um, Hammock Beach is really nice. It is. Is that the one I was seeing pictures where people are like walking out on rocks and stuff? Um, the rocks tend to be kind of by Marineland. Hammock Beach is uh, just a huge resort area, uh, condos. I, I mean, it's it's kind of hidden, but it's it's huge. They have a lazy river. It's it's a pretty cool place. Oh, I'll have to check it out one day. You know, when this pandemic, this little thing called the pandemic goes away, I come back yeah. and check it out. Oh, oh man, man, keep doing it, man. Keep kicking life's ass, man, and keep doing your thing. This is, I'm so glad I got a chance to meet you and and talk to you. And uh, thank you so much for coming on. I I hope you enjoy your Labor Day as as best as you can. I know. Uh, are things starting to open up on on the Palm Coast there? Or is it mostly takeout still, or are the restaurants and they're maybe they're, the they're opening? Yeah, things are starting to open. Yeah, I, there's some big nice patios there, so I'm sure, um, like the Funky Pelican, we've sat out on the patio there before. Um, cool, man. I, I hope to see that area or all areas start to open up again, and but especially on the coast, man. A lot of cool places up there and. Like I said, my kids, we love coming up there. So uh, hopefully we can do that again, I'm sure one day and uh, enjoy the, the rest of your holiday. And um, thanks again for coming on, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. I, I enjoyed it. <laughs> yes, sir. Take it easy. All right. You